Joining me today is a man who knows what it is to articulate the relevance of the Christian faith in the academic arena and how to apply it in the wider world of life. Dr John Rees is a lecturer at the University of Notre Dame in Australia, teaching international relations, religion in world politics, foreign policy and international development and security. That's a mouthful, isn't it, all those jobs. And these are all major international issues. And, and here to talk a little bit about it today is John. It's good to have you with us today. Thanks very much, Keith. Look, religion in world politics, what does that mean? It means many things, doesn't it? Religion in world politics, people often want to know what is religion in terms of whether it's a force for good, whether it's a force for ill, and different entities of world politics want to ask that question. Countries, international organisations, community groups, people are asking that question. We also want to ask a different question, and that is, where is religion animating and shaping the exercise of power in the world today? And the shape of the world is changing as well, isn't it? In that, you know, the things we assumed were natural areas and regions are not perhaps what they were. We've really moved to a sense of the transient nature of borders, a globalised world, an interconnected world. Some of the connections that social media has brought, the true communications revolution. Where does spirituality, identity, religion fit in all of that? Is there a place for religion um, in understanding world politics? I think there certainly is. In many instances, religion has always been involved in the exercise of power. We could say that the very existence of the nation state, yeah. which was forged some 400 years ago, I like to say to my students, 400 years young, the nation state, was very much forged in relation to the question of religion, religious violence, how to contain yes. some of that violence and how to release the energies of religion for the service of civic life. Now, anybody listening to this conversation could, could say, as they, they often do about academia in general, oh, this is all well and good, this exercises a few academics' time and keeps them busy, but how practical and real is this issue? Very practical indeed if we're to understand the landscape of influences that make up who we are as a, as a, a society. So in many instances, uh, students come to the study of religion in world politics as curious about religion itself as about where religion fits in that landscape. Religion in relation to social service, religion in relation to uh, the exercise of parliamentary power, religion in relation to a question like terrorism. Mm. Terrorism, I guess, is one of the more popular focus points for the media mm. in terms of religion, but there are alternative debates as well. Now, I think that's deeply practical because if we draw the wrong conclusions or accept excessive conclusions focused on a single issue, we might misunderstand the varieties and the value as well as the dangers of certain contributions to faith in our lives. Now, borders are a big issue. Uh, they're a big issue in Australia, but, you know, they're a big issue everywhere, aren't they? How important is that issue in thinking through uh, religion, politics and the world? As a scholar of international relations, one of my interest points in religious communities, Christian and otherwise, is the transnational yes. nature yes. of faith communities. Faith communities the world over transcend those borders. Yeah. We have brothers and sisters in the faith all over the world. Now yeah. that brings an interesting tension to bear on countries that want to set borders and say that your citizenship is the most important thing. It's very important, but where does faith identity fit into that? You might have as much in common with someone in Sri Lanka or in North America or in Egypt as you do with someone in Australia. So where does that link and how does that impact our thinking about borders? Indeed, Theresa May in Britain not recently talked about what, what am I a citizen of? Uh, well, I'm not just a citizen of Europe. I'm a citizen. The danger is that we become very isolated, isn't it? And insular in the way we think about these things. One of the questions I put to my students is what is most important to your identity? And I give them a choice of uh, you know, five or six, including religion, citizenship, your gender, your class, something else. And some students think, are we even allowed to ask that question? Shouldn't it just be citizenship? Shouldn't Australia be number one? Now, in many ways, it should be towards the top. I agree. Yeah. We have to be cohesive in our society. Yes. We have to value our nation. But those other sources of our identity, our political and religious identity, become fundamentally important to understanding who we are. Now, you've got all these achievements, you've done all this study. How has this impacted your own faith journey as, as you've thought through faith and, and religion? It's a great question, Keith. My faith journey has been quite 
varied, um, sort of a young Christian activist, as it were, very concerned with um, the social service aspects of life. My first job out of theological college was with the Salvation Army yes. as a um, redevelopment worker in Surrey Hills at Foster House. Yes. Um, and uh, from there uh, went and was involved very much in the international scene through the work of Tier Australia. Mm. Um, my journey then started to sort of globalise as it were and uh, in terms of faith traditions, also thinking about the various times in which the Catholic faith has impacted me very positively, including my earliest thinking about social transitions in Latin America through to thinking about the role of ritual practice. And so I'm very grateful to be at Notre Dame now. Well, it's lovely to talk to you and, and to see the contribution the Christian faith is making on a broader, larger scale. I hope people take up the opportunity to follow through on your, your writings and the study and the work that you do. It's a delight to have you on the show. Thank you, Keith.